Leonard, for whatever reason, I am absolutely obsessed with understanding cosmology, but, but less so about fundamental physics, at least in, in, as my life has been. But now I'm told over and over again that if I want to understand cosmology, I've got to understand physics at its most fundamental level, and string theory is now a major part of this. So I come to you to ask you, if I want to understand cosmology, do I have to understand string theory? To understand it at its deepest level, you have to understand uh, particle physics at its deepest level. But uh, let me answer it this way. The most important thing about string theory, at least for cosmology, is not that little elementary particles are made out of little pieces of string. Mm -hmm. That's incidental. That's more or less the way we got to, to string theory by thinking about that. But the final result that came out of the mathematics of little vibrating strings was that space has to have more than three dimensions. Mm. Now, you can say, if space has to have more than three dimensions and space has three dimensions, this theory is wrong. Mm. Or you can say that the extra dimensions of string theory must be rolled up and curled up into some tiny little dimensions that we can't see because they're too small. That theme predates string theory, incidentally, it runs right through particle physics in every possible way for many years. And so string theorists didn't invent it, but they've used it in imaginative ways. So let's suppose that the world at its smallest distances has more than three dimensions, and these three dimensions, these extra dimensions, are curled up in little knots, pretzels, donuts, <laughs> whatever we want to think about them, twisted maybe with extra decorations on them of various kinds. Something like your shirt. Something like my shirt, <laughs> yep, yep. And only the very tiny creatures are small enough to move around and see them. Creatures now mean elementary particles. What this does is it provides a kind of DNA for the universe. The way these extra dimensions are curled up, the way they're twisted, uh, that is what determines the nature of the elementary particles it's what determines the nature of the constants of nature. It's what determines the cosmological constant. It's what deter determines everything. And so the way these little dimensions of space, which are implicit in string theory, which string theory seems not to be able to avoid, the way that they're curled up is a kind of genetic code for the way the universe uh, will uh, behave. Now, it's the genetic code for particles, you said, and for forces, the primary forces. How about some of the, the basic background, the space and time itself? The number of dimensions. OK. How many of these dimensions are curled up? Uh, it also influences the cosmological constant. And the cosmological constant determines how rapidly space and time expand. So yes, it also determines many of the features of space and time. Now, what is the reason you need these extra dimensions within string theory? That is a very technical and difficult thing to answer. Of all the things in physics, I love explaining physics. It's what I do. It's my thing. I like to explain physics. And I hate, the, the phrase that I hate the most is, it can be shown. <laughs> I really never want to do that. I want to explain. This particular one, although I've worked in this field for a long, long time, I was one of the early people who understood that it needed more dimensions, I cannot explain it in, a, in layman's terms. Let's just put it this way. The quantum mechanics of the fluctuations of these strings simply need to bulge out into extra dimensions or they get badly out of control and the physics doesn't work right. I wish I had an elementary explanation for it, and I don't, and it's frustrating. But let's, let's define what's happening. You, you're having these very small, very strong, uh, extremely small strings, which are how many orders of magnitude smaller than a, than a proton? A billion, billion times smaller. A billion, 10 to the 18th. Actually, 10 to the 20th. OK, 10 to precise. the 20th. So it's uh, 100 billion, billion yeah. times smaller than a proton. Right. And very powerful. And these, thing, and these strings can express themselves in protons and neutrons and forces. And 
remarkably in all these different yes. kinds of, of things. But, yes. but you need these extra dimensions. The technical mathematics forces it on you. Okay. So mm -hmm. you, you got it. You have no choice. If you're going to have no string choice. theory, you have those extra dimensions. Right. And they're very small, compactified. Well, they could be big. They could be small. But we know that we, I, I can only find three of them. I can't seem to find the other ones. They must be very small. Right, right. I can't move around. The way to think about it is imagine a one-dimensional world. Imagine a world on a line. We could have particles, maybe beads, moving up and down that line. But then some ultra-small creatures discover that they don't live on a line, they live on a cylinder, and that they can move around the cylinder as well as along the cylinder. Right? They have discovered that their world is really two-dimensional, two not one-dimensional. They've discovered an extra dimension. But the big, clumsy creatures that uh, might be made out of these great big beads, they can't see the extra small dimensions. Only the little tiny guys can see them. Now, so, one of the big questions in cosmology is the structure of the universe. Is it infinite? Is it finite? Does it, it, is, it is it curved back yes. on itself? So yes. is it like a, like a, the equivalent of a sphere? Right. Uh, is it like a saddle and just That's open? Right. Yeah. Uh, do the extra dimensions of string theory have any implications in, th in this most massive uh, 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 geometry? Not directly. Not directly. What does have an implication is this picture of eternal inflation. The idea that the universe was born as a kind of bubble in an inflating, in an otherwise inflating universe. You might think that that bubble is finite and tells you that the universe is finite. There's something peculiar about geometry that actually goes in the other direction. It tells you that this bubble, as seen from the inside, is an infinite universe. Mm -hmm. Very twisted yeah. and very involuted. Uh, this is something I could explain to you if we had about an hour and a half. <laughs> what about large extra dimensions? Some uh, cosmologists look to the so-called brains, meaning membranes, not yeah. these kinds of brains, right. uh, that are very large and are very important in, in cosmology. There's some alternative cosmologies. Are those extra dimensional membranes that our whole universe is a three dimensional membrane floating in four dimensional space. And some very, very big four uh, very fourth big. dimensions. Do those relate to the string theory extra dimensions in any way? In the imagination of those people who pursue that idea, yes. That's all I'll say. <laughs> some of them are my friends. I would hope all of them are your friends. All of them are my friends. <laughs> So as we progress to the future uh, in, in understanding more about string theory, do you, are, are you optimistic that it will help us to understand cosmology? Yes. More than oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, I am optimistic that it will help us understand cosmology. At the moment, for example, well, uh, let's, uh, let's exclude this question of the multiverse and, uh, and all this stuff that, uh, that's very esoteric. Um, String theory can provide constraints. It can provide constraints on the parameters of theory. And in particular, it, I suspect that it can provide constraints on the parameters that go into this inflationary theory. Mm. There are various versions of the inflationary theory. Some of them make use of ranges of parameters that I think, and, it, and, and many of us think, are outside the range of what string theory can uh, give. Mm. So it may very well be that string theory forces upon us a range of parameters, which in turn will have implications about the next round of, uh, of observations about, uh, about um, astronomy. And, and if so, that's a wonderful iteration between theory and practice, yeah. or theory and observation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm afraid to say, to tell you the truth now, the truth is that the what was string all the rest theory. Of the, stuff? <laughs> the, the truth is that the string theory is pushing us in a direction of parameters, which, in a certain sense, would make the experiments less interesting. It's making it less likely that we will see uh, what are called tensor modes, gravitational modes in the uh, cosmic microwave background. So it, it is going in a direction of saying uh, that the observations may not have the interesting feature that, uh, that some people might think it has. If these gravitational waves are seen in the cosmic microwave background, mm -hmm. I think that would be very, very hard to digest for a string theorist. Mm -hmm. So it does have implications. Mm -hmm. 
the implications being that we shouldn't see what the most uh, potentially interesting uh, experimental signals. Now, that being said, that makes it doubly important to do the experiments to find out if those that's signals are there. That's the best kind of science. Yeah, yeah. The fact that string theory may say that you shouldn't see it is all the more reason to go after it and see if you see it. 